many, many of us who are artisans uh, tend to sleep a little late in the morning. You can call Mercedes 7 in the morning and she's up and Adam and checking out email or thinking. She never stops. That's, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. She's got so much energy and talent and I don't think she, you know, she's not going to stop. Why should she? I am well aware of her reputation as a, a choreographer and as a dancer. And uh, when you link that together with uh, what she has done to keep jazz alive, uh, we, we're all uh, the beneficiaries. And Mercedes has been uh, not just a friend, but also a mentor and also a, a, a trailblazer for many of us. Um, we met years ago in the Sophisticated Ladies Broadway show uh, in 19 something or other. We won't tell you that, that year. Just look it up. You'll find it. She blurred the race lines. And she also, because she was so attractive and beautiful and was so disciplined, knew what she was doing, showed up, was pleasant to everybody, she worked all the time. She has forgotten more things than most people will ever know. It's true. Yeah. Mercedes is history and she's very now. The Mercedes Ellington that I know now is a griot. Griot is a term that we borrow from Francophone West Africa. The griot in African society is the individual who is responsible for the oral history of the community, the society, the nation, the culture. The griot is a living library. That's what Mercedes Ellington is. She's a living library, not only because she carries the legacy of Duke Ellington, not only because she pioneered the way for black women in entertainment, but also because she has founded the Duke Ellington Center for the arts. I'm very proud of, uh, and of such an association. And Mercedes is a, oh, a performer and a choreographer, philanthropist, historian, and an educator. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one may not think of her that way immediately. They may, may know one aspect, know her, but we, everybody will know her as that person who helps keep alive uh, Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. And uh, given uh, what some of us feel about jazz, uh, this is a lot. She's like one of the United States notable families because there have not been many uh, that have been connected and in the public eye for three generations. Her dad, Mercer Ellington, great band leader, her granddad, of course, the Duke Ellington. And she co-authored, uh, you know, this wonderful book recently, Duke Ellington, an American composer and icon. I first met Mercedes when I was the program director of dance at Western Carolina University, and we were going to do a radio show entitled Echoes of the Cotton Club, and we needed a springboard for it. And the next thing we knew, she was at Western Carolina University on campus, dancing with us, doing the Shim Sham, which was incredible, and the kids loved it. Mercedes is generous, respectful, kind, supportive, honest. Let's just say she doesn't suffer fools, <laughs> gladly. And it's great, and she, she speaks her mind, always. As amicable as Aquarians can be, you don't really want to push them against the wall. Her dad was on the road, so was her grandfather. I mean, that wasn't easy, I don't think, growing up. You know, they weren't around, right? They weren't around, so I'm just saying she was actually fortunate that she had this strict Catholic, uh, you know, grandmother that kind of brought her up and brought her up straight and narrow, and 
I probably got her into dance class. Mercedes' involvement with Juilliard School of the Dance was very, very important uh, that it gave her the involvement of ballet uh, along with all of the other love of dance that she just innately and organically had. You know, She's got a little ballerina's body. We just are so busy looking at Mercedes until we forget the package the creator gave her. She is that ballerina. She's uh, very attractive and uh, constructed very well. <laughs> When she discusses her dancing, June Taylor always comes up. June Taylor really uh, instilled a lot of discipline in her and the professionalism. They had to look good at all times, even when they were rehearsing. They were kind of ambassadors, you know, for, for the company. June Taylor was old school too. I mean, man, she got out there and you make a wrong turn and she got those kids she, when she looked, they didn't have to hear the voice. They just could tell by the look. She ran a tight ship. Obviously, she has a great respect for her time and her, her career with the June Taylor dancers. And I've seen some pictures of her that kind of make me cry a little bit. And I try not to be a mushy person, but deep down inside, please. I featured event on the Jackie Gleason show was the June Taylor dancers and I can't explain to you now how the rumor got started but there was a rumor not only in Baltimore but in every inner city across the country that one of the June Taylor dancers was a black woman but she was so fair-skinned that you couldn't really tell her from the other white dancers. So we would watch the Jackie Gleason show and we would, when the June Taylor dancers came on, we'd get closer to the screen and we'd look as hard as we could and you'd hear us go, oh, there she is. Oh, oh, oh that's the one. No, that's the one over there. Lo and behold, when I actually met and worked with Mercedes Ellington in the summer of 1980 and shared this story with her, it almost brought her to tears because she was doing what she loved to do. She didn't know she was being an activist. She didn't know that she was changing history for an entire generation of people. What she did know is that she was following her chosen profession to be the best dancer that Mercedes Ellington could be. He used to produce the show in Miami, Florida, and before the season would start, he would take the whole cast from New York and go down by train. And there was, you know, the local publicity people would have people out there to meet Jackie Gleason and the, the June Taylor dancers. And at one of these stops in the South, south could have yeah. been Georgia or Alabama, uh, she came out and she was standing toward the back. This was her first year and she was sort of, this was before the uh, civil rights mm -hmm. yeah. was passed. And, uh, and she was a little nervous. 
And then somebody yelled out from the crowd, who's that color girl back there? And when she heard that, she, she just turned around and went back into the train. And Jackie Gleason got very upset by this. And he said, that color girl is the new dancer in the June Taylor dances. And he said, just a minute. And he went back and he put his arm around. And he brought her out and brought her to the front and had his arm around her. And he said, this is our new star, our new star. Okay. And awesome. uh, she, she then said he took care of her. Yeah. You know, he, he really always made sure that she was safe. She, you know, said, look, we're all Americans. We're all reared in the same atmosphere. We're like everybody else. Just because the skin is a different color doesn't mean that we aren't still within the genre of what we do. When we were doing Sophisticated Ladies, it was a lot of tension, a lot of upheaval, a lot of changes of staff and, and, and command, and sometimes it was it was really disappointing that something, some of the things that were happening, and some people were being let go of, and we had to fight to keep them on, and things like that, and, and Mercedes is a fighter, so she stood with us and for us, and, and here's the most, the, I, I'll tell you the most um, uh, telling moment that I had with her, and that's uh, when the uh, pay-per-view was coming into play and we were on Broadway they wanted to come and film the show and we were very very concerned that if they're going to show our show to people in the other parts of the country then what gives them any reason to fly to New York to see the original company There's, it diminishes our possibilities so we were out in front of our theater Mercedes included wow. protesting our show that was being filmed for pay-per-view with another cast Mercedes has had to invent Mercedes you know. Mercedes has made a name for herself. She's done the work. She's studied. She still studies. She still takes uh, dance class. She took the time, the effort, and the and the and the inspiration just to be who she is and to to to, to blaze her own trail. So, I mean, this is somebody who's still tangoing now at this age, right? I've gone to many of the dance competitions that she's been in. And she is incredible. She's teaching, t she's showing tango, she's teaching tango. She's inspiring other people and, um, and just staying vital. We are the <clears throat> choreographer, the music editor, the costume designer, the producers, the directors, the dancers. We have to know our audience. That's a hell of a lot of hats. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I love her hats. Mercedes, I love your hats. <laughs> and she does wear many hats. I she also it. has many hairs, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs>
how proud I am of you and congratulations on this award. You certainly deserve it. Not only do you preserve your grandfather's music and his legacy, but uh, you also contribute to so many people's careers as a dancer, choreographer, producer, uh, director, and all around a nice gal. So mahalo and uh, congratulations again. Merce, you are so deserved this this award, my God, of anyone I could ever think of. Your illustrious career, who you are as a human being, your talent, your teaching ability, your choreography ability, uh, just all of it. And uh, we, we just had, a, I've had such a wonderful time with you, and it's, it's not over yet. <laughs> I know that... Uh... While Mercedes is being honored, I know that she does not know that there will be this video. Right. But I am delighted to be part of this. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Mercedes, I'm on an airplane. I'm flying in from Abu Dhabi. I'm almost there. I'm almost, okay. I'm not on an airplane. I'm actually sending you this message by tape to say congratulations. I am so happy for you, for this great honor you're receiving. I'm in Abu Dhabi. You can see it in the background there. And it's lovely here, but I would rather be there with you. So I'm there in spirit. Now, Merce, this is what I want you to tell those folks there. I want you to tell them how hard you work. I want you to tell them how focused you are on keeping alive the legacy of Duke Ellington. I want you to tell them about the fun laughs we have at our board meetings and all the different things that we are planning and that we've done, for instance, our trip to the United Nations to speak to the General Assembly, to talk about Duke's role in international diplomacy, his trip to the Soviet Union, where people ran out on the tarmac and followed the plane. Make sure you tell them about Duke's uh, Coca-Cola with seven teaspoons of sugar. And remember when we went to Buffalo and we came up with a new word, Isa? You may want to explain that to them. I'm not going to try to do it. You'll have to do that. So to sum up, it's a pleasure working with you. You deserve every honor, every, every, every tribute you get. And I just want to say, I love you madly. And I can't wait to get back on a plane and come back and zoom, 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 and work with the Duke Ellington Center for the Arts again and do our next big event, which you know will be December 20th. Sell some tickets while you're there on there. Okay, bye. Mercedes, Mercedes we, we love, love you, you madly. You've received many awards, and this is just another of the probably many to come, so you deserve it. Love you, girl. Well, I'm thrilled. I'm happy, I'm excited. I love this woman, Mercedes Ellington. I, you know, if I could throw a ticker tape parade in her honor, I would have the biggest ticker tape parade <laughs> because it's deserved. And I'm so grateful that this incredible university is taking care of the business of the living because we usually get it so wrong. But here we are, taking care of our great Mercedes Ellington. Mercedes, I adore you. I thank you for everything that I have learned under your tutelage uh, and with your sisterhood and just family feeling of whomsoever will, let them come to the table and enjoy and let's have conversations that might uplift us all and let the world be a more beautiful place. As tough as things are, there is still the love of dance there is still the love of the romance of the dance, and it is absolutely essential that we celebrate this incredible, romantically inspired woman, Mercedes Ellington. Congratulations, I love you. I am so thrilled to be a part of this event that's honoring you here at the Columbus State University. You deserve it. You are so, so loving and so deserving of it all. And enjoy, just have a great time, and let us know as soon as you can where you're hiding the fountain of youth, okay? <laughs> I love you, love you madly. Mercedes, you are one of God's gifts, and I am so grateful to really call you my friend. Do not make me cry, have a party tonight, but I really think you should know that. I love you, I adore you. 
I think you're fabulous. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> Mercedes, obviously, that is T for Two from No No Nanette, a show in which you appeared in 1971, as I was appearing in Applause on Broadway. 1971 is when we met, became friends, and that was 46 years ago, my dear. To quote Shirley Temple, oh my goodness. <laughs> but anyway, my favorite picture of you, Mercedes, was sitting in the 10,000 seat outdoor theater, the Muni. We were getting ready to start our tech rehearsal at 12 midnight. You were sitting there surrounded by citronella candles, a blanket over you, and a can of mosquito repellent. My dear, we have been things and seen places, but we're still here. I am so proud of you, Mercedes, and no one deserves this award more than you do from the Columbus State University. You've always championed dancers and everyone in our business. So congratulations, my dear. I treasure our friendship. I love you forever, Mercedes. Now I'm going to play myself off. You for me and me for you alone. Mercedes, it is Monday, October 30th. It's my day off. And what am I doing on my day off? What do we always do on our day off? We find some place that is a theater. And here we are in one of our favorite haunts in the Laurie Beachman Theater. We've been here many times, you and I. And I get the opportunity to talk about and to one of my favorite people. You, my darling, my love, my inspiration, my goddess, my inventor. I am today in part because I met you in 1980 and you added to my <laughs> skills the ability to say, yes, I can tap. I want to use this opportunity to say two things. First of all, congratulations on the honor you are receiving from Columbus State University. I believe it is a Life Achievement Award. They need to give you three Life Achievement Awards because you have been a pioneer. You are an activist, and now you have become the keeper of the flame. And I want to reiterate how much I hold you in great admiration, great respect, great compassion. You've been an inspiration to my personal life and my career. I don't know too many people who have changed my perspective about what it is I want to do as a performing artist, as a creative artist, as a critical artist. It isn't enough to want to see a change in the world. It is better that we become the change in the world that we so desire. And that is one of the lessons 
I continually learn from my relationship with you.